scared. I'm just hoping I can make it through four strikes. With swords having been used for thousands of years, some of the most deadly weapons available, there are many beautiful, intricate types that are made and forged in fire, with the show pulling in more and more skilled swordsmiths from all over the country. There have been many various foragers with their own quirks and specialties. Number 8. Mesa's Moro Chris the Morocris is a formidable weapon designed primarily for slicing and chopping. The ancient double-edged sword originated in East Ava and was and continues to be widely used throughout Southeast Asia. The blade is wavy and meant to create a wider wound during combat in order to cause the victim to quickly bleed to death. In one episode, contestants Mace and Murray were tasked with making their own versions of the Morocris, with Mace creating an astonishingly beautiful weapon inspired by the spirit of the tiger. He added stripes and a tiger tooth, filed handsome edges on his blade, and created a stunning handle, and forged his Morocris entirely by hand. He developed the beautiful blade designed using 23 layers of steel, all forged by hand. Mesa's magnificent blade ultimately won this episode of the competition. Number 7. Jamie's Roman Gladius The Roman Gladius was the primary weapon of the Roman legionnaire. For more than a thousand years, it was the weapon which dominated the Roman battlefields. The two finalists, Jamie and Mareko, were charged with creating their own version of the blade. Jamie, a full-time bladesmith with 15 years of experience, set out to produce the most beautiful blade possible, featuring Damascus steel. He hand-carved the hilt and engraved it with the words Fortune Favors the Bold in Latin. He used olive wood as part of the handle components, which add a historically authentic quality to his sword. Mareko, a full-time bladesmith with five years experience, created a stunning sword with strong lines and sturdy geometric handle. He incorporated 675 layers of steel during the forging process. Both forged weapons were tested on ballistic dummies dressed in Roman gladiator garb and helmets. Both weapons passed the cut and kill tests, but ultimately Jamie's weapon proved to be the better of the two and he won the competition. Dave Baker even told Jamie that his Roman gladius was one of the most beautifully forged he had ever seen. Number 6. Brandon's Grim Reaper Sight In a special themed episode, the two top contestants were tasked with recreating a bubonic error tool turned weapon, the Grim Reaper Scythe. While the scythe was originally meant to be used as a farm instrument to reap large amounts of crops, it is fitting that it soon became synonymous with death, since he is the reaper of souls. Rebellious peasants commonly use their scythes as deadly weapons, leading to the pop culture adaptation of the farm tool as a murder machine. The contestants had to forge a scythe with a 24 to 26 inch blade, a shaft of 70 to 73 inches, and two handles. Contestants Brandon Scythe stood out for its incredible strength and craftsmanship. He constructed his blade out of premium 1080 steel, made the shaft out of a spiral shaped maple wood, and constructed his handles with Mortensen tenon joints to make them, quote, strong as hell. Ultimately, his dedication to strength paid off as he walked away $10,000 richer. Brandon, you ready for this? Yes, sir, let's do it. All right. I'm scared. I'm just hoping I can make it through four strikes. Brandon, congratulations, your blade survived. Number five, Ted's Tabar. With origins from Persia, India, and Armenia, 
The Tebar is a traditional battle axe entirely made out of steel. While an all steel weapon can definitely be an advantage on the battlefield, it caused some construction challenges for the forgers. Ultimately, winner Ted Thompson was able to make an axe head out of an 8 pound siege hammer, head, admitting that he wanted to chop a car in half with his Tebar. During the strength test, his Tebar left a strong crease in the shield, yet the axe maintained its straightness, showcasing the advantages of an all steel construction of the Tebar. Number 4. Ryu's Viking Battle Axe In Season 1, Episode 3, the final two challengers were asked to make a traditional Viking battle axe. Originating from Scandinavia, the battle axe was often made with a lot of bulky, multi-layered steel, helping to make it sturdy. Ultimately, it was Ryu Lim who rose to the top of the challengers with his version of the Viking battle axe. His win was all the more surprising because Ryu's home forge was made almost entirely of makeshift tools and equipment he made himself. In fact, one piece of equipment required cooling with a hairdryer, which Ryu held by hand. His spirit of stubborn determination to craft the best possible weapon, regardless of the difficulty, led him to create one fierce weapon, capable of splitting skulls despite admittedly not being the nicest looking weapon. Number 3. David's Qatar David Goldberg, a full-time bladesmith with 20 years of experience, won this challenge. He drew on his extensive training and knowledge of Japanese philosophy to create a beautiful two-bladed push dagger known as the Qatar. Throughout the challenge, David used his ability and focus on the task at hand, and was complimented on his practice of putting forth the best effort to result in the highest achievement possible. David's weapon featured a beautiful blade with swirls in the metal and a handsome hilt. It cut cleanly through two pieces of metal and successfully passed every test required, as the judges used it to disembowel and efficiently execute the required kill cuts, proving that this is one beautiful but deadly weapon. Number 2 Washington's Kalishmar The Kalishmar, a popular dueling sword, became an iconic presidential weapon thanks to its role as George Washington's favorite, and it's not hard to see why. The Kalishmar featured a unique trifoil blade design that tapers to a precise point, allowing for thrusting and stabbing in attacks. The extremely broad forte gives the blade ample strength, all while featuring intricate and beautiful elements such as a perforated and decorated oval guard and pommel. Contestant Josh forged his Kalishmar out of 5160 and mild steel, while also improvising a rifle barrel for the pommel. Josh managed to maintain the beauty and intricacy of the Kalishmar, all while also ensuring that this blade was sharp enough to kill, resulting in a weapon that even George Washington would be proud of. Number 1. Peter's Crusader Sword This episode featured Peter and David in the final combat. They were tasked with forging a crusader sword, typical of the Middle Ages, and intended primarily for use for horseback. This sword has a very long 28 to 31 inch blade with double edges and a hilt. Peter, with 22 years of experience and a full-time blacksmith, forged a heavy sword which easily passed the kill test. Dave forged 5160 steel and created a walnut handle with deerskin hide. Maricada described it as having a beautiful thrusting capability Ability. The two blades were tested by a rider on horseback, with the horse at full gallop. The ballistic dummy clothed in medieval garb and cloth armor was the target for both swords, which ultimately proved that they were both sharp for thrusting and cutting. Both weapons were tested for strength in a mechanical device. Ultimately, Peter's sword won the competition due to its superior performance and artistic construction. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you everyone for tuning in to Film Trip. Don't forget to leave a like and press subscribe if you like this video and comment down below if you liked our list. Let us know what your favorite was and we will see you in the next video.